Dear students, good morning. Welcome to Law Excellence IAS. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 16th August 2020. The first article for discussion is How will the Israel-UAE pact impact the Gulf? We have discussed that in detail on 15th August newspaper. Now let us conclude certain facts and make certain perspectives on the matter. You know this, Israel was never accepted as a country in the region. Arab nations always believed Israel was imposed onto them by the West and a lot of injustice has happened to Palestine. Originally, UN proposed for a two-nation theory. What was present-day Israel? They wanted to be divided between Israel and Palestine. And it was not accepted by Arab nations. Their position is, which is also called Khartoum Declaration, which says no peace with Israel, no talks with Israel, and no recognition of Israel. A series of wars fought between Israel and these Arab countries. You know, in 1948, in 1967, 73 various wars have been fought in the region. The 1967 war is uh, most significant and lot of land from these Arab countries went into the hands of uh, Israel. One is uh, East Jerusalem, West Bank were taken up uh, from Jordan and then Sinai Peninsula, Gaza from Egypt and Golan Heights is taken up from Syria. Now, whatever the two nation theory which the world is accepting is to have from Gaza which is occupied from Egypt and the West Bank which is occupied from Jordan. And Israel is not ready to make even those concessions, that is the situation. In this scenario, Egypt and Jordan made a peace deal with Israel. In Egypt's peace deal, the Sinai Peninsula was been written to Egypt and then Egypt in turn recognized Israel and some concessions are also made to Palestine. And in the case of Jordan also, no land is been written back but certain concessions are made to Palestine. So Palestine got an authority or a self-governing authority in the West Bank and Gaza when Egypt deal was made. Later, a Palestinian authority at the time Asr Arafat was there, it was recognized when a deal was made with Jordan. But today, in this particular deal, the Palestine got nothing. What UAE is agreed is, the Israel will not annex any further parts in West Bank. Annexation of the West Bank was a threat from Mr. Netanyahu, that is Israeli Prime Minister. So UAE said, withdraw your threats. And I will give you a good deal. I will recognize you. And I will establish diplomatic ties with you. It is means just a threat is been withdrawn by Israel and no actual concessions are made on the ground. That's the reason why Palestine has rejected this particular deal. We need to understand this deal as more a sympathy, as more as an antipathy to Iran than a sympathy to Palestine. You know that the cold peace deal of Obama. What is this cold peace deal? He wanted to re-establish relations with Iran and develop economic uh, relations as a counterbalance to the Saudi Arabia in the region. So, President Obama Iran nuclear deal was antagonized by Saudi Arabia, that is um, Arab countries, Gulf Arab countries and also Israel alike. Now Israel and Gulf Arab countries are coming together. So they have accepted the fact of existence of Israel and we can see more kind of deals with uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain in the long run. The next point is these particular uh, deals um, are expected to fast track a situation which is going on in this particular region. In the previous class I have discussed this. If you observe the things carefully, Turkey, Iran, these are coming on one alignment and Malaysia, Qatar, to an extent Pakistan is also joining this alignment. And on the other side, Bahrain, UAE, Saudi Arabia, they are showing more trust and engagement with USA and Israel. So the Palestinian cause is expected to be taken forward by this Turkey, Iran and other countries. In this case, Turkey, Iran, and then Palestine, all these people said this is a stab in the back. And Saudi Arabia, 
inclu did not make any comments on the matter bahrain did not make any comments on the matter and the person who got benefited is mr trump in the middle of the presidential elections it is a very good successful thing or successful victory on diplomatic front to him that's how we can put it as the next article is verdict on women's right to property we also have discussed this in detail but let me conclude certain points to you you know that uh, the women are also recognized as co-partners co-partners means the people who have a share in property by their by their birth so in a hindu undivided family's property the daughter also can be a co-partner so the verdict recognize the verdict of the supreme court recognizes women as co-partners to father's property by birth unambiguously the biggest point is um, this judgment goes into effect retrospectively uh, and prospectively mostly the judgments are applied prospectively the judgment also gets applied retrospectively because supreme court said it is just an interpretation to the law and there is no change in the legal position so hindu succession act 1956 was amended in 2005 and it made women as the daughters as the co-partners equal co-partners as a son in that case there was an issue the father who from whom daughter is getting a co-partnership he is expected to be alive on the day the law was passed that is september 9 2005 and the law also has a provision which says that um, if there is a partition affected before december 20 2004 then it will not be affecting or uh, it will not be changed um, to give a share to the daughter so if father made any partition before december 20 2004 that is also valid and second what was the in initial position the pa- the father from whom co-partnership is coming to the daughter shall be alive and the daughter who is getting the co-partnership also shall be alive these were the interpretations made before now supreme court has clearly stated that daughter gets her co-partnership by birth so father need not be alive and the daughter herself need not be alive and the second thing if a partition was made before december 20 2004 it is valid but it has to be in writing registered or has to be by a decree of the court then only it will be valid this is what the supreme court has clearly stated the next article is every child is a scientist here i want to talk to you about this white socks experiment in this five year old school children were asked to move around their school on socks without shoes and then whatever the mud or debris attached to the socks is supposed to be observed under a microscope the people have observed that on microscope identified seeds and also mud and other debris attached to it in the process they are not just curious about their own socks they are also curious about uh, the child next to them so whatever we call it as in today's science peer to peer learning and then validation peer to peer validations uh, and then confirmation of a theory everything has in the original mind of the child so the curious mind has to be retained which is can be a foundation for our scientific progress so that is the reason why the child the scientist in the child can be brought out when he learns the subject close to his surroundings so the teacher plays an important role if she is able to connect the child to the nature that's where observation and reflection goes into the mind of the child the next article is hurdles to naga peace we know that the naga issue is pending from the days of our independence the nagas wants themselves to be declared as an independent nation but these nagas are geographically distributed in various states in india and also in myanmar in india arunachal pradesh assam manipur nagaland in these four places in these four states they were distributed in this case all the naga inhabited regions shall form a greater nagalim this is the demand of the certain naga national groups and the second they want to have a complete sovereignty outside the framework of indian constitution this is the second demand initially naga national council was formed 
with Angami Fiso who fought for Naga's cause from London. Shillong Accord in 1975 has made some peace in Nagaland but however various Naga groups got split. So the NNC got split and NSCN has come out of it. Later this NSCN IM also an NSCN also got split with multiple other factions. Today we have close to two dozens of factions which are fighting for Naga national cause and they have serious differences among them. In 2015 when a framework agreement was made between NSCN IM and government of India the government did not involve all the groups but in 2017 government of india created a new banner called naga national political groups to involve everyone so obviously the identity of nscn im is undermined when every political grouping is brought into negotiation by the government of india this is where nsca and im developed a mistrust is government of india trying to make benefit or advantage out of the differences that are existing among the naga groups is the first question and second the tungluk nagas are dominant people among nscn im these tungluk nagas are from manipur mr mubaya also belongs to the tungluk nagas in that case the nscn im talks about uh, greater naga limb demand has to go along with the naga peace process and other naga groups are not very serious about that and they stated that the greater naga limb can be put into abeyance for the peace process to go forward so the biggest problem is the mistrust that is existing among the naga national groups and nscn im's mistrust with the government of india is the challenge for the peace process in this context mr ravi nr ravi who mediated this peace talks is center of the mistrust of nscn im he called the chief minister to give orals to find out connections of the government officers with these underground elements armed groups so that has heard the sentiments of the naga national groups that's what has been stated in spite of that many of the naga national groups want him to be continued but nscn im wants him to go out as governor and interlocutor from nagaland that is what is the essence of this the next is government may review the age of marriage prime minister modi announced that age of marriage may be reviewed to fight malnutrition in the country a committee was appointed under ms jaya jaitley for this purpose it is an established fact that early marriages early consumption and lack of nutrition to mother are intricately connected with stunting and underweight what is the criticism for this in india the problem is still deep rooted the government is trying to find a superficial solution of increasing the age of marriage rather than addressing the deep rooted cause in india marriage is seen as a protection and a safety to the woman so that's why lack of safety lack of education and issues related to poverty are the reasons for early marriages we need to bring in a behavioral change that the marriage is not the safety it is the society that has to become safe to women and girl children so improving the safety of girls can improve the age of marriage naturally second if we increase the age of marriage any any marriage below that age will get illegal and it becomes criminalizing that particular marriage and the people who conduct the marriage that's why marriages will get less reported and less registered so the problem may not go away but the reporting of the problem will come down that is what the pro- issue is it means more and more malnutrition issues go hiding for not marriage for marriages for not being reported next is increase in marriage age can be misused um, to arrest the love birds you know that young boys and girls if they are into a relationship you know the girls parents may f- put a case saying that they are i mean it's an underage sex or underage marriage and can be used for vengeance finally safe sex access to health information and reproductive assistance increasing Uh, retaining of children or girl children especially in education system all this can be a way forward that is what is been spoken here next is digital health mission will liberate citizens prime minister modi in his independence day address announced national digital health mission 
In this, every person in India can get a digital health identification number. Through this, he can access his medical records, diagnosis, treatment history, etc. It is expected to improve accountability in healthcare system and doctor shopping by the patients, etc. can be arrested. Government also clearly stated that getting this health number is purely a voluntary thing. So, questions of privacy are being clearly addressed from very beginning. This entire health database of the citizens will be managed by the government, central government alone, not by any private individuals that also government has assured. The next article is about the uh, Prime Minister's address to the nation. The most important thing is National Digital Health Mission. He also praised the sacrifices and befitting reply given by our uh, soldiers at LOC or LAC. The second, Prime Minister from uh, on his August 15th speech from the rapids of um, uh, Red Fort spoke about sanitary pads. The more than 5 crore sanitary pads were distributed through P1 to 6, 000, through 6,000 Jan Aushadi Kendras. It means it's a remarkable uh, achievement with regard to personal hygiene concerned with women. And Prime Minister addressing a concern of personal hygiene related to women on his August 15th speech itself is breaking certain kinds of barriers. Next is, the optical fiber program will be connecting 6 lakh villages. Obviously, it is expected to bridge the digital divide which is existing in the country. And a fund with corpus of 25,000 crore will be set up to complete all the housing projects. These are all included in this speech. These are the articles for today. Thank you very much.